Denial. Denial involves refusing to accept reality or facts, thereby blocking external events from awareness. This is when your brain says, nope, I'm not dealing with that. Even if the truth is right in front of you, you just pretend it's not happening. Like someone who eats junk food every day and says, I'm healthy, my metabolism is just unique. Cause of denial is overwhelming reality or fear of loss. Denial kicks in when accepting the truth would cause unbearable emotional pain, such as during grief, illness, or addiction. Repression. Repression is the unconscious blocking of unacceptable thoughts, feelings, or impulses. A person who has repressed memories of a traumatic event may not recall the event, but might experience anxiety triggered by reminders of the trauma. This is like your brain sweeping bad memories under the rug, except the rug is your subconscious. You're not even aware you're doing it. Maybe you don't remember a stressful breakup, but you still flinch when someone mentions your ex's favorite pizza place. Projection. Projection involves attributing one's own unacceptable thoughts or feelings to someone else. Has anyone accused you of being mad when really they are the ones angry? That's projection. For example, a person who is angry at their partner may accuse the partner of being hostile. It's their brain saying, these feelings aren't mine, they must be yours. Like blaming your friend for being moody when you're actually the one sulking like a cat that missed breakfast. Displacement. Displacement shifts emotional impulses from a threatening object to a safer substitute. Bad day at work? If angry at their boss, these people go home and yell at their pets or take out their frustration on family members. That's displacement, taking your feelings out on someone who didn't cause them, just because it's safer. Regression. Regression entails reverting to behaviors characteristic of an earlier developmental stage. You're a full-grown adult, but under stress, you suddenly want your mom, your blanket, and a bowl of cereal. That's regression. Your brain hits the child mode button when life gets too hard. Sometimes under stress, an adult might throw a temper tantrum or sulk like a child. Rationalization. Rationalization involves justifying behaviors or feelings with seemingly logical reasons, avoiding the true explanation. A student who fails an exam might blame the instructor's teaching style rather than their own lack of preparation. This is when you make excuses that sound smart, but deep down, even your brain knows you're just trying to feel better. Like saying, I didn't want that job anyway, after messing up the interview. So the cause is thought to be cognitive dissonance. When there's a gap between one's actions and beliefs, the mind creates rational excuses to reduce the discomfort of inconsistency or failure. Reaction. Formation. Reaction formation is behaving in a way that's opposite to one's unacceptable thoughts or feelings. A person who feels insecure might act overly confident to mask their self-doubt. It's like putting on a mask that shows the exact opposite of how you feel. Ever been super nice to someone you actually can't stand? That's your brain saying, let's flip this feeling around before anyone notices. The cause is thought to be deep guilt or anxiety about true feelings. That's why the person expresses the opposite emotion to hide or avoid confronting the real, socially or personally unacceptable one. Sublimation. Sublimation channels unacceptable impulses into socially acceptable activities. This defense mechanism is hands down the best one around, and most clinical psychologists really recommend it. For example, someone with aggressive tendencies might take up a sport like boxing to express their aggression constructively. This is one of the more grown-up defense mechanisms. You take a negative impulse and turn it into something positive. Angry? Go for a run. Heartbroken? Write a song. It's like emotional recycling, intellectualization. Intellectualization involves focusing on the intellectual aspects of a situation to detach from the emotional impact. A person diagnosed with a serious illness might focus on learning about the disease rather than processing their emotions. Instead of feeling your feelings, you start analyzing everything like a detective. My dog didn't die. This is just part of the biological cycle of life. Meanwhile, you're holding back tears and clinging to the leash. So the clear cause would be emotional overload. Suppression. Suppression is the conscious decision to delay paying attention to a thought or emotion. Unlike repression, suppression is a deliberate choice to avoid thinking about distressing issues. This is when you consciously avoid a thought because it's just too much right now. Like saying, I'll think about that breakup after finals. It's emotional procrastination, sometimes useful, sometimes messy later. Compensation. Compensation involves overachieving in one area to compensate for failures in another. A person who feels inadequate academically might excel in sports to boost their self-esteem or vice versa. You feel insecure in one area, so you try to be amazing in another. Can't dance. 
become the funniest person at the party. Can't sing? At least you have great hair. It's the brain's way of balancing things out. Which, to be honest, can be a healthy way to cope with perceived weaknesses, but excessive or unhealthy compensation can lead to overachieving or self-devaluation. Undoing. Undoing is an attempt to take back unconscious behaviors or thoughts that are unacceptable or hurtful. After insulting someone, a person might spend extra time being nice to them to alleviate guilt. You say something mean, then bring the person coffee the next day and act like an angel. Your brain is like, let me just erase that. It's damage control with a side of guilt. Splitting. Splitting is viewing people or situations as all good or all bad with no middle ground. This black and white thinking is often seen in individuals with borderline personality disorder. Your friend is your hero one minute, your villain the next. It's emotional whiplash. Reality is more gray than black and white, but splitting doesn't get the memo. So this is caused by inability to tolerate ambiguity. Often rooted in early developmental issues or trauma, this occurs when the person can't reconcile the existence of both good and bad in themselves or others. Identification. Identification is a defense mechanism where a person adopts the traits or behaviors of someone else, usually someone they see as powerful, admired, or even feared, to cope with anxiety or insecurity. For example, a child who's being bullied might start acting like the bully, hoping to feel stronger and less vulnerable. At its core, identification is about self-protection and the desire to belong. It's your brain's way of saying, if I can be like them, maybe I'll feel better about myself. This can show up in everyday life, like mimicking your boss's work style to gain approval, or dressing like your favorite influencer to feel confident and connected. It's not just copying for the sake of it. It's a subconscious attempt to feel safer, more accepted, or more in control by taking on the qualities of someone who seems to have those things. Interjection. Interjection is a defense mechanism where a person unconsciously absorbs the beliefs, values, or behaviors of someone else, often someone they admire, depend on, or fear. It's like mentally downloading parts of another person into your own identity. For instance, someone might take on their partner's opinions, habits, or mannerisms as a way to feel emotionally closer or more connected. Or a child might grow up believing certain things just because their parents did, not because they thought it through, but because it felt safer to accept those ideas without question. Instead of developing beliefs or behaviors from personal reflection, you internalize them as a way to feel secure, accepted, or loved, especially in closer influential relationships. It's kind of like emotional autopilot. Fantasy fantasy allows individuals to escape reality by retreating into a world of imagination. Daydreaming about success or romantic relationships can provide temporary relief from life's challenges. When life's a mess, your brain goes, let's pretend. So you imagine yourself as a rock star, CEO, or dating a celebrity. Harmless, until you spend more time in your fantasy life than real life. Acting out. Acting out involves expressing unconscious emotions through actions rather than words. A teenager might engage in risky behavior to express feelings of anger or frustration. Instead of saying, I'm upset, you slam doors, break things, or ghost everyone. It's the emotional version of flipping a table. You don't talk about your feelings, you perform them. Passive aggression. Passive aggression is the indirect expression of hostility, such as through procrastination, stubbornness, or intentional inefficiency. You're mad, but instead of saying so, you show it with sarcasm, lateness, or forgetting things. Like telling someone, oh no, I love when you talk over me. So basically, it's emotional sneakiness. Altruism. Altruism is dealing with stressors by helping others. This mature defense mechanism can provide personal satisfaction and a sense of purpose when you're hurting, but you help others to feel better about yourself. Like volunteering after a breakup. It's a healthy way of coping, but yes, it's still a defense mechanism. Humor. Humor allows individuals to express uncomfortable feelings in a socially acceptable way, often reducing tension and strengthening social bonds. You joke about things that hurt to make them easier to deal with. Like saying, I'm not single. I'm in a long-term relationship with disappointment. If used well, it's powerful. If overused, it's hiding a lot of pain behind laughs. So, defense mechanisms emanate from fear. And one thing we know for sure is that we don't have a pill for fear. You might say there are psychological ways to cope with it, like behavioral or cognitive therapy, and yes, those methods exist. 
but most people usually need only a single trigger to return to the starting point. That's where we find the Bible, which says, Do not be afraid 365 times, once for each day of the year. This means the Bible recognizes that we, as humans, will ultimately face insecurity, vulnerability, rejection, and hurt, which lead us to build walls to defend our inner selves. For that reason, God needs to remind us each day that we shouldn't be afraid. That's the key. You need to remind yourself every day not to be afraid so that you don't have to live with a chronic defense system while you journey through life.